My novel was Knots and Crosses by Ian Rankin, and it takes place in Edinburgh, Scotland. It's like a crime novel. And so the main character, Inspector John Rebus, um, works for the, the police department in Edinburgh, and they're trying to solve this, um, what they call the Edinburgh Strangler, and he's kidnapping like 12-year-old girls and strangling them. And before his time in the police department, he was in the army for the, um, it was called like the special, um, special air service. And he underwent like a torture experiment while he was there. That was like very classified with another man named um, Gordon Reeve. And um, because it was so like dramatic and such like a, like a traumatizing time in his life, he kind of repressed all those memories from the army and like all of this like, like everything he kind of um, went through, it resulted in him getting a divorce from his wife and like he can no longer like have like healthy relationships or like friendships with people. Like he's kind of like a recluse, kind of like minds to himself. And so um, in this novel, he's trying to figure out who the killer is and he receives all these anonymous, no anonymous notes and letters saying like there's hints everywhere, like look at the clues, like they're all around you, like open your eyes, like all this stuff. And within all the letters, some will be like pieces of rope with knots in them, and then other letters that will be two matches, like um, like tied together with a uh, yarn in the shape of a cross. And so he has no idea what any of these means, but like in the back of his head, he like constantly thinks that like it has something to do with the Edinburgh Strangler, and that like something about like his life and himself like has to do with like solving the case. And so. Um, as the novel continues, the Strangler finally uh, kidnaps his daughter, Samantha, 12-year-old daughter. And so this is when he knows that like, it really does involve him. And not sure how he comes to this conclusion, but he convinces himself that it has something to do with his time in the army and because of the torture experiment, because like, he doesn't remember any of it. And so lucky for him, his brother, Michael Rebus, is a hypnotist and um, is able to like hypnotize him and bring all these memories back while on the side also being like a drug dealer and there's someone trying to like get him to, not really relevant to the plot, but um, so he like, un like uncovers all these memories of him, the torture experiment, and what they come to learn is that while he was there, him and his friend Gordon Reef are trapped in a cell with no light, very little food or water. Um, they constantly are hearing like um, people's like screaming and crying like everywhere in the background and um, the only thing they have is each other, like each other's like stories, and then they play a game called Knots and Crosses on the wall, which is basically like tic-tac-toe. And um, we find out that one day, the people who had put them in this torture experiment open up the cell and say, okay, like John Rebus, um, you, pass, you pass the experiment, like you pass the test, you're free to go, but your friend failed and he can't. And his friend begged him to stay, like begged him to help him out, um, was like, please don't betray me, please don't leave me in here. And um, he left. And one of the <laughs> requirements of him being allowed to leave was that he could never ask about his friend again, never could figure out like where he was and how he was doing like ever again. He just had to like completely forget about him. And that's what he did. And so because of all these memories coming back, he is convinced that Gordon Reeve is the serial killer. And um, through other like clues and um, like the, the police department, they uh, like find him in the library, and uh, the end of the novel kind of ends in kind of a like shady way. Like you don't really know like if he got caught. You don't know. Um, you hear like gunshots, but you don't really know for sure like who got shot. Um, it kind of makes the assumption that Gordon got killed, but um, it's still kind of like vague. And so for my thesis paper, I focused on three main three main ideas. The first one being the idea of revenge, and it was just kind of like. Uh, people who seek out this like sweet revenge on other people, they um, have all these like great expectations on how like good they're gonna feel after they like finish like whatever they're doing to like harm the other person. Like they think it's gonna be such like a rewarding moment. And like in my research, it kind of finds out that like people who try and like I guess like act on this revenge, they don't really feel all that like successful about it later. And another thing was that. Um, a lot of the time, the idea of revenge is just to, like, get a specific message across, and if that person doesn't get the message across, then it, like, really frustrates them, and it just makes the situation so much worse. And in this case, I was with Gordon Reed. He kept sending John Rebus all these anonymous notes, and, like, he just kept disregarding them and, like, not thinking anything of it, whereas um, if he had, like, understood these messages, then maybe he wouldn't have, like, kidnapped 
uh, John Rebus's daughter. Um, the second idea was serial killers. Um, just kind of like the idea behind them, their motives, like just kind of like patterns within them. And um, one of the things that research is that oftentimes serial killers had a very traumatic childhood or were like bullied or um, had like, were born in like, uh, grew up in abusive families. And Gordon Reeve in this novel mentions all the time about how he hung out with older kids despite the fact that they constantly like, were like bullying him and beating him up and all this stuff. And he was like, I only did it because I knew that like, one day like I would be able to do the same to other people. And so that was kind of like a sign there. And then the third thing was for past memories. And from like what I looked up, it was just kind of like the idea of how really like certain are we that these repressed memories are like true and like how did they, just kind of like how does it work and how like something so traumatizing can cause you to like block out like an entire like part of your life and like the idea of like whether or not you can like truly get those like ideas like back, pretty much.